Hello there, this is actually going to be like my third, uh, no, my second time making a video about coefficients of friction, because I think the first one, it was kind of confusing, convoluted, and it was just in general, I don't like it because uh, I gave you an equation for the coefficient of friction that it's a coefficient of kinetic friction, but you it's really difficult to know when you can actually use it. So I don't, I'm, I'm kind of taking that back. I'm going to say, um, I'm going to tell you not to use that, actually. Um, so I'm actually taking that video down. Hello, as okay, we already left off. Whoop, that's me. I'm taking that video down as we speak. I'm going to replace it uh, with this one. So coefficient of friction, I'm deleting it right now. Delete this one. I just deleted that video because I don't want it to be there to confuse people. So um, in one of the uh, in one of the the videos that I made, I said that the coefficient of friction is equal to, or at least the coefficient of kinetic friction is equal to the tangent of the angle, um, which basically mm -hmm. means that if you have uh, a ramp like this, that's a quite a ramp right there. If you have a ramp, um, then basically, unless as long as no one's like pushing on anything right there, uh, the coefficient of friction is just the rise over the run. And the coefficient of friction is basically the slope of that line. Uh, hold on, I got a text. Uh, sorry, short attention span. Anyway, um, so that generally holds true, but um, don't use that on a test because unless you're sure you know in what context to use it because that could give you a wrong answer. So, um, what comes next? What am I going to do now? I'm just going to work through a couple examples because I think that's the best way to do it. Um, okay, so what kind of problems are we going to see on the test? We're going to see stuff like, okay, um, given this block, we'll say it's a, uh, a 10 newton block, Newton block. Um, if it is a 10 bl Newton block and it's at rest, it's not moving, it's not accelerating or anything, what is the coefficient of friction? Oh, I'm sorry, one more piece of information. And we'll say this angle right here is um, 20. Okay? So, what is the coefficient of friction? Sorry, one sec. Text. Okay. What's the coefficient of friction? Um, what, let's figure this out. Uh, first off we can say, okay, well we know that gravity is going to make this thing go downwards, right? That's what the 10 newtons is referring to. It's 10 newtons. Yay, crappy 10. Okay, so then, what, how much is that pushing in what directions? Um, hold on, let me move this over a bit. Uh, well, we can say that that's got this x and y components, right? So we can kind of make that triangle there, right angle triangle. It's there we go. Okay, so we can kind of say, let's make this blue, actually. So we can kind of say that this, uh, this box or whatever is being pulled um, down, the, down the ramp by gravity at what? Try to come up with this yourself. Three, two, one. Well, it's ten times the sine of that angle. And why is that? That's because this angle right here is 20 degrees, so the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Or if you tilt your head way to the side, so that way this is horizontal, then the sine is this height, and this becomes the height of the triangle right here. This is the height, and this is the length. So that's what we have as being equal to the, like, the applied force, right? Uh, so, force applied. And that's just equal to, take out our magical calculators, um, we got 20, take the sine of that, times 10 equals 342. 3.42. 3 so, 3.42. And that's just the, the size of the force times the, por times the percentage of it that's in the x direction. So that's what we get as our applied force. What's this? Uh, how much is 
how much uh, how much is gravity making the block push into the ramp? Well, uh, we could draw that. It's a, you figure the, the normal force is the same, right? This, the ramp is pushing the um, the ramp is pushing the block back with the same amount of force. Uh, so that way, the block doesn't go through the ramp. So we can say that the force of gravity in the y direction is going to be equal to the normal force, and that's just going to be equal to um, the size of, or the rather the weight of the block, times cosine of 20, which is the percentage of that weight that's actually um, pressing into the ramp, and not just down the slope. So that's going to be equal to magical calculator 20. Take the cosine times 10. And we get this 9.40. Around that 9.40. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Okay. Um, so that's our normal force. Now we said that this is at rest, right? So it's not moving. If this is not moving, well then. That means that the force of friction has to be pulling, um, has to be basically be pulling the, it, 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 the force of friction has got, is what's got to be keeping this 10 newton for, this 10 newton crate from sliding down the ramp. So it's got to be equal to this applied force, right? Hopefully that makes sense. So we get that the applied force is equal to the force of friction because they have to balance each other out. Well, the frictional force is equal to what? The constant of friction, right? Uh, in this case, it would be kinetic friction and uh, static friction because it's not moving, but that doesn't really matter because we're just what they're going to ask us to do is find the, the coefficient of friction, and we're just going to use the data they give us. So. Uh, it's a coefficient of friction times the normal force. Um, yeah! Uh, I gotta go soon, uh, cause dinner, but the coefficient of friction times the normal force. So, mm -hmm. we get, remember, th these two are the same, right? The, um, this, this force right here and the force of friction. So we can say that 3.42 is equal to whatever that co coefficient of friction is times the uh, normal force. The normal force we figured out here is 9.4. So then, if we divide everything by 9.4, we get 3.42 divided by 9.4. We get 0 0.364. Well, 0.364, and that is the coefficient of friction, right? So that's how we would solve for that. Now, say, um, actually, I'll do. I'll do an accelerating mass in the next video. This was for if the mass is still, we just say that these two have to be equal, right? I'm just going to explain it here. If this is accelerating, well then that means that this ma this force is more. And then you use um, your F equals MA. You use your F equals MA. And you know this force. And you know uh, that it's going to be accelerating somewhat. So, if that's the acceleration, well then, the force, of fr the force applied minus the force of friction has to be equal to that acceleration, right? That's just what you end up with. Or rather, it's the net force, or it's the mass times the acceleration. I'm sorry. Because it's the mass times the acceleration um, applied. I'm coming! Um, minus the... Whoops! I'm sorry. This is a minus. So, uh, minus the mass times the acceleration of friction. Um, and basically that's going to give us what's, what's left. The net acceleration. Um... Yeah, so hopefully that makes sense. That's how you um, would find it if this was accelerating. You basically figure out how much more of a force there is here than there is here. 
um, and then you take that and then you use this same method except for now instead of fa being equal to ff fa is equal to something more than f of f the difference between them plus f of f uh, I'm out of time, I gotta go but uh, I'm gonna keep making more videos on this so uh, see you then